whoever yeah. you guys didn't Hi, hear. Guys. Sorry, technical difficulties. Yeah, I know, and um, sad in America too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So this is your your eat. Everybody knows this. This is your eat. Uh, we will catch up a little bit, but we were talking about event planning yeah. and what is event planning all about. Your eat is uh, a, a, an honor of favored. Uh, favored by your eat events and design. Events and design. She's one of the most amazing event planner in the DMV area and now she can be found internationally you guys can get her we just trying to get yes. to know about her okay. right now so my team can come to Ethiopia <laughs> yes she has a team of people that does exactly what she does and uh, we're talking about literally what event planning is all about so you were telling me literally like I think we're in the right point it stops so we can pick up from here so a lot of people don't know about what event planning involves yeah so i was saying that um you know a lot of people when they reach out they say oh do you guys do like decor do you guys do flowers do you guys do stationery do we do like hair makeup all that kind of stuff and i'm say i always say no like that's not what an event planner does an event planner is someone that is kind of a consultant that has connections with everyone who knows you know who the best people are for your needs and then also um has different relationships with vendors that sometimes it's easier if it's coming from a planner saying like hey i have a client versus just the client reaching out to them because sometimes they're going to you know they're going to want to work with you because like oh you're working with favored by yodi it's going to be easy they know exactly what to do you know we're not going to have to um you know do stuff that's not in our scope so that's kind of what event planning does we give recommendations um when I, we do design so um we help couples figure out like their color scheme that they're going to have the different fabrics that they're going to have um the fashion all those different things um to make the wedding look beautiful but we don't actually you know put centerpieces together and all those type of things but you get the people you get the right connection for yeah. them you get the those people that does the amazing job that we see in your wedding happen and you have a good um uh, you probably have a better communication with those companies and mm -hmm. you know because it's very like it's very misinterpreted like in yeah. our community someone just asked are you an event organizer or interior designer interior designer um so i actually have done some interior design um but most of the work that people know me for is event planning and event design Uh, not necessarily like homes and things like that but i am slowly trying to get into that just for very like special projects okay you did it like i wanted to ask one question again so let's say i'm getting married tomorrow mm -hmm. right and then i saw you today right now mm -hmm. and i'm very impressed and i come to you mm -hmm. what are the things you're going to offer me it, like what are the first phase and then how how can we like okay i'm planning to get married let's say how like which is it in three months i have to let you know is it mm -hmm. in one week because that's very yeah critical so, and important i won't do something like i think under a month i i won't touch it um just why because, because if it's under a month usually that means you either have nothing planned if you already have all your vendors and all that kind of stuff yes maybe if i'm not busy or if my team isn't busy we might do it but what i'm really trying to teach especially our community um, you know the whole reason i started my business was really for the habasha community i wanted us to have planners you know we didn't have wedding planners before me at um, all still we don't you are the only one that i know about No, there are actually quite a few, especially in Ethiopia. There's a lot of Yes, Ethiopia, yes, yeah. but in this area like honestly, I am you I didn't know. I don't know, maybe there are. 
there, but, there are a lot of like up and coming, which I've been either mentoring or I know of, they've reached out to me um, and I've kind of given them, hey, like this is what I did to start. Um, but there, I want there to be more. Like, I feel like we need to have more of everything. Like right now we have so many hair and makeup. We have so many like dress designers. We have so many photographers. And I feel like with planning um, and even decor, like we have a lot of decor, a lot of production, but with planning, people don't realize how important the planning is in order for the whole wedding to happen. So I would love for there to be more people that really get into the industry and take it seriously um, so that they understand like one, it's very lucrative and it's also, um, it's beneficial to the client, you know, people really appreciate it afterwards where they're like, wow, I couldn't have done this without you. You know, it allows the families to really rest where people, you know, they remember like growing up, when Trust I go to weddings, it was the whole family that's doing everything. They're the cooking, they're the, you know, setting up the tables. They're the ones, you know, organizing the, the cars and the music and running around, but they don't get to enjoy their family's wedding. And I think when I was young and I saw that, I said, why, like, why do they do that? And, and I remember going to an American wedding and it was the complete opposite. You know, they got to enjoy their daughter getting married or their son getting married. You know, they got to dress up and feel like it was their day too. Um, specifically the parents, because I feel like parents they put so much emphasis on weddings. Like some weddings, I'm working directly with the parents. I don't even like work with the clients because it's the parents that are, you know, either paying for it or hosting right. it. Okay. Um, and the bride and groom are kind of like, okay, you know, we'll tell you what colors we like, but we don't really care about anything else. And it's important for them to enjoy it, you know, especially because it's their pride and joy too. So a lot mm -hmm. of times people say it's not your wedding, it's your parents' wedding. That's very, very true. <laughs> so um, my job is to really make sure not only the bride and groom relax, but their family relaxes too. Um, so that everyone can just have like a very uh, memorable moment that can happen for years and years afterwards. Yeah, one of the reason I actually wanted you to come to this show, as I told you like earlier for people that were not here because I want them to see this video, mm -hmm. is that um, I had a very bad experience with my wedding. I told uh, I told uh, Yodi a few minutes before, uh, I had a West African wedding and Ethiopian wedding clashing together mm -hmm. because we wanna make the whole culture happy. We wanna make the Habesha like, my culture happy yeah. we want to make the night you know how nigerian wedding how huge it is yeah so i was in culture shock because i didn't know weddings you go to a wedding and you don't need invitation i am from a place that in ethiopia without a card or without invitation card in fact for a matter of fact is that if you don't send them two weeks before the wedding people don't show up because they say, how can she send me you know, like, it's a culture yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. They take it, They it's offensive. Like, oh, yeah. last minute, you know, you should have sent it to me earlier, yeah. And, you know, in weddings, like, when I went through it, I, I decided, like, I will do it. And I went through a lot, like, I went through a lot of issues, yeah. which I even told that they forgot my wedding, the cake, and mm -hmm. I had the bad, like, in my wedding reception, I ha my husband had to tell me, babe, this is what is like you're gonna decide if you're gonna be happy from this moment yeah or else you will remember for the rest of your life you didn't have it so then i decided okay let me forget about everything and then you know enjoy myself now that's one of the reason i invited you for this program because you know habesha we have weddings heavy weddings yeah there it's, is drama I, I, it's it's beautiful and it's also very stressful because there's so much emotion in our weddings, you know? Everyone wants to get involved. Like every cousin wants to come. Every uncle wants to have a job what? to do. Why every, are we Africans every, like this though? Every aunt wants to say that they are the one like that made the dodo what. And like, it, it's so much love, which I, I think 
is one of my favorite I don't parts. feel like his love for me. I'm sorry to say. I feel chaos. Like, everyone's to show their talent, their creativity. Their, yeah. oh, it's a whole mess. So, I feel like because of that, mm -hmm. because I remember the first week of my, after I get married, like, it was not exciting for me. Like, a lot of, I, I, I had a friend because of that, because of what the, their wedding, what it cost them, how it was all messed up. It leads them to even a divorce in a year time. Yeah, no. And so I feel like a void. We don't want there to be drama at your wedding. We want you to enjoy your day. Um, oh, I see one of my brides. <laughs> um, you know, we want you to enjoy your day. We want your families to enjoy their day. And I think that's what I was saying about the different levels where you can get monthly. Can you repeat that level for them? Because, you know, it's in the other video. So um, when it comes to event planning, yeah, so explain to them. to event planning, there's like different levels, just like in everything, there's levels to stuff. So if you are thinking like, hey, I want someone to help me from A to Z with everything, you know, that's called full service. So that's full service planning. We're going to come, we're going to help you find the venue, we're going to help you find, um, you know, what's the best budget, we're going to help you find all of the different vendors, like we're the ones reaching out to them, getting the price quotes, um, we're helping you with your guest list, with sending out the invitations, all that kind of stuff. So that's full planning. So that's like the top. Then after okay. that, there's partial planning. So that is for couples that might have, you know, they already have their venue and maybe a photographer, but they need help with all of the other uh, vendors and the missing pieces and um, specifically more with like design. They really want help with the design. Then there's month of coordination. So month of coordination is for couples that might be a bit more budget conscious or might really enjoy, you know, doing the work of reaching out to vendors and getting quotes and things like that. So with month of coordination, they already have all their vendors. They need a professional planner to put everything together and communicate with the vendors and you know create the timeline, create the floor plans, and really figure out how everything can work seamlessly so the day of, they don't worry about anything, they just show up, take pictures, dance, have cake, and then that's it. Um, so when people reach out to us, they typically go to our website They'll fill out an inquiry form. They'll put their like contact information, the main like wedding details, and then we'll reach out to them. We'll send them a questionnaire that just gives us a little bit more details about them personally. Um, also about, you know, maybe their guest count, if they already have a venue or if they need help finding venue, things like that. And okay. then we'll have like a meeting with them either virtually you know, or over the phone, you know, now with COVID, we mm -hmm. do a lot of Zoom calls. Ooh. I know. So, but it's okay. You know, I miss meeting my couples in person, but I love still being able to talk with people, getting to know them, you know, whether they're here, whether they're in Ethiopia, whether they're in Europe. Like the other day, we got someone from the UK that reached out to us. And because of Zoom, I mean, whether we had COVID or not, I'd still be having to talk to them via Zoom. Talk to them. So it's, it's very normal. Um, and we work with a lot of people that necessarily don't live only in the D DC, Maryland, Virginia area. We have people that yeah. are from New York, people that maybe are in Toronto, in LA, Seattle but they might be getting married here or they want us to go with them somewhere else to plan the wedding there. So um, like I mentioned, you know, one of the last destination weddings we did was in Ethiopia. So wow. the couple worked with us and then they sent all of their vendors there. Um, we did work with a couple vendors that were on site, which were amazing, but you know, they really wanted to invest in a good team so that's why they said, okay, we're going to bring a lot of the vendors from America and then, you know, you did it, do it there. But no. um, I feel like with weddings, especially with like multicultural Habesha weddings, um, there has to be this like mindset change where people, they think that 
having a planner is a luxury and it's really not a luxury it's more of a necessity. that's it it's not even like i don't even feel luxury they no. we don't even know i yeah. honestly so like different price ranges so you know i feel oh like there is different price range you have oh, for, yeah, for, yeah. for each oh okay price, it's different pricing um and even like there's some people that say oh yodi you know you're out of my budget and i say that's perfectly fine if there's someone that i can recommend to them that might be at a lower price range that still does a good job i'll send them over so that they can help them with their day um myself and my team we only do a select number of weddings a year um and oh that's, wow that's a way of one not being too like all over the place like i rather focus on the quality of the wedding than the quantity um and i think with especially habasha weddings people sometimes they get upset they're like oh you know i want you to do my wedding in like a month and i'm like i'm already booked or you know that's too short notice if you have nothing planned already like we've done a wedding it was under 2 months but the reason why we did that was because we were originally hired to do a destination wedding and then something mm -hmm. happened where they couldn't do destination anymore and they said we need to get married like asap So that's the only reason why we did it so fast. But if you're thinking you're going to find a planner and um if you do have like a larger budget, we might consider it. Um, exactly, <laughs> girl. I was about to say it's cuz it takes a lot of time. We're the closer is the more you get expensive, not because you yeah. want to get expensive, it's because I usually don't everyone Yeah, everyone you're going to get is going to be expensive on you too. You want the decorator, they will yeah. say, "Oh, uh to get a flower from uh, Singapore, it will take me two weeks." Exactly. But you're telling me I have to get it in one week, so I have to make it fast shipments. You know, yeah. there is a lot that goes on with it, I believe. It, it it's amazing that you said that because people don't realize, you know, in order to get certain things, you need to order it. And especially when it comes to flowers, you know, even food if you're going to try to feed like 400 people you know the caterer is going to have to get orders for all of the different ingredients you know the food <laughs> the labor to make the food staffing um and i typically like most of my clients will reach out to us between 9 to 12 months if it's like if it's full planning they're usually reaching out like 12 to 14 months um partial planning you know 9 to 12 months maybe like wow and then month of coordination is I tell you what I was thinking the month but <laughs> like the first like it's I didn't know it's like it's 9 months okay oh yeah i mean i i have someone who just booked us and they're getting married in 2022 so you know it just depends on like the level of detail 2022 yeah because oh. they don't want to be rushed and you know sometimes people want to know how much a wedding is going to cost when i'm telling them like oh you know for 100 people in dc for what you're thinking about is like $60,000 they're like wow that's a lot of money i need time to save or i have some clients that spend a lot of money like you know 100,000 plus and they need also to either save or they don't want to be rushed they want to take like mo one month at a time we'll meet with them we kind of figure out certain things we get vendors locked down and then we go to the next month and do the next month so that it's not all jam packed um what i find couples that have good expectations with budgets and then also give them t give themselves time to really enjoy the wedding planning process are the happiest couples you know You see now you getting to the point I want to get because now you're telling me it's all making sense for me why we have a staff people because I represent my people mm -hmm. that why we don't hire a wedding planner let me just brief it to you in a way I'm thinking mm -hmm. from what you just said okay number one, we we hardly uh get proposed we always make the plan to get proposed with the men right like that's the culture like we know before we like most oh the shamagile the shamagile everything yeah. so i think okay now then the culture itself tells you that once shamagile 
has been sent mm-hmm. hello like in the next 3 4 month is wedding i think so also not not anymore not that not like that no in this maybe i don't know but in in where like where back at home mm-hmm. for me if you tell me that uh you you get proposed now or the magalays came and then you tell me 2 years it it's not like they don't wait for 2 years to get married mm-hmm. i feel like that might also be like a culture norms that people are used to yeah to rush yeah. things up and they think something like that can happen in the western world because we are in america right now yeah and they want to do it like back at home and things don't work like that that can also have you know a controversy in doing having a wedding planner and then we try to rush it and do it ourselves in the yeah. end of the day we lose our money we're not happy yeah like I mean, me I get, i get so many emails from people that will reach out to me and will say i'm so mad that i didn't hire you because you we did this and we didn't have a planner and or it's like oh we used the venue person to do stuff and it worked it didn't work out and i hate getting those emails because i feel bad but those same people are always telling their friends don't be like me hire a planner hire yodi because that way you're not going to have to worry about all those small different details i'm so, like ever since i've started and mind you i've been in business since 2012 so it's like literally 8 years wow um I've had to talk and talk and talk to our community and educate our community on things that the western world does and of course it's it was always very hard and even till this day it's still hard for some people but now I'm noticing it's the couples that will reach out to me because they're like I am not having my family run around like I don't want that headache I want to enjoy my day and I feel like this the generation is shifting even It's when changing. we're at home you know It's true a lot, when i was there i talked to a lot of people i went to um different spaces so i could talk to like event coordinators and event planners and they told me like even the mindset of our community is changing where very you can't true have an event just like that you know if you do okay you're going to have to run around like crazy you're going to have to pay a lot of money you know it can still happen but you're not going to enjoy it like you would if you had the proper protocol to plan so i think people are understanding that they're seeing that you know instagram instagram is great now with sites like habasha brides and habasha weddings yes like all the different details and programs. if you come to habasha not you see this kind of info yeah exactly <laughs> uh, but primarily with like weddings people are getting inspired by not the same old thing and they're seeing that these couples are planning with planners you know they have professional photographers they have professional decorators um and it's more to like elevate the whole community and our style and like just the beauty of our culture you know Very true. a lot of people when they look at like the habasha weddings i do they're like wow like i just love i love your culture i love the food i love the fashion i love the music i love the dancing like i do a lot of multicultural weddings where it might be you know a habasha groom with like an american bride or you know an, an abisha bride with like a nigerian groom or something like mm-hmm. that. I've seen some and, beautiful work of yours. Yeah, and I love it because I'm able to mix in our culture with other cultures so that the other people can see it and they appreciate it and then they can have their own family history like you know long after and it's well wow. to see because of course you know us we know our culture <laughs> everybody exactly our culture this kasta the gursha everything is amazing but for outsiders to appreciate it too it gives you that sense of pride and i think you know all habasha people are very prideful so it's important for us to um to share the cultural and the beauty with everybody else. And okay. you definitely get to do that with weddings cuz with weddings 
you touch on every industry. You touch on entertainment with dancing and music. You touch on, you know, the beauty with hair and makeup. You touch mm -hmm. on fashion, wow. your, your lips, your, your dresses, and like, even with your like melts and stuff like that, with um, your catering, you're touching, you know, cuisine and Cuisines. Um, with decor. So you probably have a touch of everything, literally like for you because of your work. <laughs> I love yes. it. I don't get bored because I mean, I I love it because I'm always trying to do something different. You'd um, be doing the cake testing everywhere. You I go know, and that's take. Because like, like, <laughs> I'm always eating sweets. You're okay. So. You you taking care um, of yourself. I saw your workout videos and I was like, okay. I mean, I have to because now I'm like obsessed with sweets. But um, yeah, you do get to enjoy a lot of things. By also experience you get yeah. you a lot of knowledge it. from the different shapes that you meet yeah. and everything you i want to talk i want to i want to i want you to give us a glimpse of some numbers don't give us everything yes when i say numbers is that let's say we have viewers right now and they have, they're in the dmv area wherever they are mm -hmm. at least let's give dmv as an example mm -hmm. And okay, they got engaged. Uh, they are very excited to get married. They have not picked the date. And they're thinking about numbers, how much our wedding is going to cost us. Yeah. So every wedding definitely have its own level of tests. And okay, oh, I want to invite, you know, any Abishan wedding is not going to be less than 100 people, period. I mean, now with COVID, you're gonna see a lot of oh numbers. yes oh people, I forgot about COVID I've you see I've had to like decrease numbers you know in half because of COVID and we're doing like small intimate weddings because of COVID and even with buffet I even know? wanted to ask you how are you going to do it like how yeah it's people don't realize like the event industry has been suffered the consequences. You know? People are still getting married and still celebrating, but um, they're doing it in a whole different way where now you have to consider the safety of yourself, your guests, your vendors. Um, every day we're learning. I really feel them. sorry for people that were getting married this couple of months. I saw some invitations and everything. I was like, yeah. oh my God, they have to postpone, yeah. change the dates. and we postpone like 10 weddings for next year. Yeah. So wow. I mean, it's, it's really hard. Like my heart goes out to all of the couples that have to, you know, pivot through all of this. Um, you know, at least my clients have me, I feel bad for the clients that also don't have planners. That's why when this first started, um, I wrote like a blog post on my website with just some like top tips and ideas. For people that are going through COVID, like, hey, this is what you should do. It's free. Go on my website. Just check it out so that you don't have to be super stressed out um, and have, like, a plan. Because it can be scary. You know, you already paid majority of your vendors. And oh my God. you're trying to figure out, okay, if I'm going to change the date, does that mean I'm going to get my money back? Or, you know... Oh do I have to rebook all of these things? It's like very scary. Then you have to resend invitations and you have to make sure like guests are okay. And then some guests might feel like they don't want to, you know, risk it and come anymore. So like a lot of the couples that were getting married in 2020, they have to navigate through all of this and it's scary. But oh, what I love is seeing couples like make, making sure that they understand your marriage is most important. You know, a wedding is a celebration. You can have a wedding this year. You can have a wedding next year. You, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But the main thing is about you two getting married, unite, uniting, um, whether it's legally or, you know, before God or whatever religion you are, so that that's the core of the marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, even before COVID, I used to always tell my couples, don't let the wedding get bigger than your marriage. You know, wow. shouldn't be fighting. If you're fighting. Wow. I hope everyone is listening to this, what she's <laughs> saying right now. I don't hope. let the wedding get bigger than the marriage. Yes. Beautiful. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, 
yes, you guys can disagree on certain things, whether it's, you know, what menu you're going to have, the colors, all these type of things. But it's the wedding planning is the true test of compromise. That's when you find out when the couple is able to compromise during wedding planning about certain things. It's kind of like a glimpse of what your what like your marriage life is going to be like. So I love when my couples work together. You know, um, they come to the planning meetings together. It's not just on the bride. Um, and I get it. Sometimes grooms they're like, I don't care about decor. I don't care about this. Mm. And I'm like, okay, maybe you don't need to come to that. But when they're coming and being vocal about the DJ and the band or you know the cake tasting and other things that they're interested in it's important because the wedding is the guy's day too it's not just the girl's day yeah and it kind of shows like them unified and they're picking it out together and they they even learn about each other too like oh i didn't know you like this flavor or i didn't know <laughs> you know this was your favorite teddy afro song like things oh like that. wow and it's always fun to see that because like I told you, when I first, like, I kind of interview our couples. When I send them the questionnaire, it's a long questionnaire with all different types of questions. And okay. it's pretty much asking them about, you know, your first date, you know, what made you interested in each other? And, you know, what are your favorite things and stuff like that. And sometimes when they're doing it together and then they get on the call with me, they're like, this was so fun. It was like we were relearning about each other. And that's oh, what wow. the whole process is. It's like you're learning about what you guys like, what you don't like, what's important to your families, what's important to you, and then kind of trying to make that all fit in a perfect oh, wow. kind of like box. And that's your wedding. And that's our job is to help you and guide you through that process. So you literally gonna be like a you are also doing a work of the shrink like you're a shrink to them like in a way in yeah. that process i mean i didn't go to i didn't probably to they come and cry at you right oh i've been I've had <laughs> a lot of people um talk to me about how to communicate with their families i've had brides you know talking to you, their girlfriends that are driving them crazy or you know um, their moms are driving them crazy. And yes, as a planner, I'm very empathetic. So, you know, I feel for my couples and I want to help them as much as I can. But I will say, your planner isn't your therapist, okay? <laughs> I definitely think, like, if there are serious problems, you should go see a person for therapy. I strongly believe in therapy. I think that's great. But I do think that people people would be surprised how much they lean on a planner. Like event planners, we do a lot. And um, it's, you're always like, you're always like the first person someone calls. They're not calling, you know, the hairstylist. The vendors. Or, you know, the photographer, if there's an emergency, they call the planner so that we can fix the problem and everything can get back to normal. So, so do you let them call you midnight? Like, what, do you no. give them what time do they call you? Or no, do you have a no. different business line or with your private line? How do you no. handle that? I have office hours. Um, people can email me anytime. I tell them, email me. Okay, cool. You know, sometimes during wedding planning, people can't sleep. So they're like up all night. You know, they like looking at Pinterest and Instagram and getting inspiration about stuff. So I have a lot of that email me during work when they shouldn't be emailing me um, they email me at home when it's late at night and that's perfectly fine I'm just not going to respond at 12 like I'm going to respond during my business hours so that there's some level of professionalism and then also you know like I have a job too I have a husband too I have a exactly you have a like, life too I need, you know oh hey Yanni. Um, I need to worry about <laughs> that um, so I can be a good person and then come to work and help you plan your wedding but there's that level of respect definitely and i will tell you in the beginning in the beginning so you have like in, no no you inform in, them in the beginning of like my career i let them call me any time of day like i was always available 24 7 call me i'll be there but i learned that you know 
that's not healthy. That's not healthy for you as a business owner. Um, that's not healthy you as, you know, a wife or a daughter or a friend because you're always in work mode. So there has to be a level of balance. And now that I have set those boundaries with clients, they, they appreciate it more. And then, you know, everyone around me appreciates it too. So I think it's really, really important. So someone picked it and said, don't let the wedding be bigger, be bigger than the marriage. Yeah, everyone tag is... me, quote that. Say, yes, Coyote. beautiful. I'm going to quote that. It is the truth. I mean, I would love clients to like book me all the time for weddings, but I want them to also understand like, if you're not, you know, ready to be in a healthy marriage, you should not be having a wedding. You shouldn't. You should wow. work on your marriage and your relationship first. And then, you know, think about a wedding down the line or something like that. Because I feel like sometimes people in our community, they rush into it because they think, oh, everyone else is getting married. Getting married. You know, my parents want me to have a big wedding and all this stuff. And it's so much pressure from society. Like, you have to have a big wedding. Most of the time now, most of my clients are having weddings under 300 people. Before, it was a whole nother story. You know, even with my wedding, I had 300 people. And when I tell you, I had to literally fight my parents because my parents know everyone in D.C. and Maryland and Virginia. Everyone. If you know, I know a lot of people. Everyone knows my parents. So for them to cut the guest list that down was like, it was so hard, but the parents they, are like the one that that brings lists like left and right. Girl, oh, the person is not going to talk to me. He invited yeah. me for her. Like, I, mean, I don't I, care. I, my mom still has friends that don't talk to her. Don't, they, still don't talk to her. How can you invite your whole people that you know all yeah. your life and you're like 60 and 70 and I, I am getting married? Yeah. I don't I mean, even know how old the people. Now. She's like, she go ahead. I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, at the same time, you also have to have a wedding you can afford. You know, sometimes people are spending all this money and they're kind of like, they don't know where the money's going to come or they're using lots of credit cards and oh. putting in debt for a wedding where I'm like, no, you should, you know, take your time to save or have the wedding you can afford. You don't have to have this big wedding, you know, and I mean... Again, that's yeah. why in the beginning, when we work with couples, it's really to help them just like decide what's the best budget for what they can afford and also like how many people they can have at the wedding. Yeah, talking about budget, I'll still go back to that question. So let's say someone in DC is getting oh. married <laughs> and they want to invite, okay, let's say 200. Mm -hmm. And these people just got engaged and they want to have, I'm, I just want to have people, I want people to have an idea. Yeah. And I'm, I wish I could give you like an exact number. You I can give me definitely you know. because of the class, because yeah, of. There's so many different things, even like level of vendors with a photographer, you could have a photographer for $3,000 and you could have a photographer for $9,000. Like it all depends on the style. And that's with hair. That's with makeup. That's By with the way, did you plan your wedding? Because your wedding is amazing. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, my but, God. So let me tell you, I have to take that back. I planned it, but my team coordinated it. Like, I didn't definitely. worry about yeah, definitely. anything. Like, I was, most of the wedding, I was dancing all night, you know. Um, so they did, like, they did a, a phenomenal job. Everyone had a great time. But... Yes, I I think even before he proposed, I kind of knew a lot of the things I wanted. And that's a lot of brides. I have girls that DM me and they're like, "Oh, he hasn't he hasn't proposed yet, but I'm going to call you when he does cuz I know oh, what's happening." Wow. And I mean, I've had people do that. They booked me after they got engaged. And I'm like, oh. I think we women, I think we Oh my god, the guys will be upset with me but I, I feel like women are more organized when it comes to certain stuff than men sometimes i've had some grooms that are very organized okay yeah i've worked with just grooms for certain weddings oh really 
Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't um it wasn't an Abishaw wedding. It was an African American wedding and the groom was the main contact for everything and he was very Wow, cool. that is so good. He was very um actually and a, a Caucasian I had an a Caucasian groom who was very like I want it this way, I want it this way and the bride was like, "Okay, you know, whatever he wants." And we did it. So it all depends on personalities. I don't like to stereotype like, "Oh, you know, women are more organized." Of course, I would like to say that cuz we're women and I think women are amazing. But there are some men now I'm noticing, we call them like groomzillas. Oh, wow. <laughs> they they want to be involved in everything. And I'm like, "Wow, like where were you 5 years?" Which is beautiful. Which a it. lot of men needs to start adapting in our community. Yeah. Also, I wanted to just uh let everybody know because we know the first video was uh it was messed up. So We had a little technical difficulties in the first video. Yeah. Week. So okay. just to, for you to know about you um uh, uh to know about Yodi is that she was how you started the events planning and a lot of people think that um uh, I want them to know because you told me personally like you went to school for a whole lot of different things. Yeah, so I went to school. So before I was born and raised in the, you know, Washington DC, Northern Virginia area. So you know, I've been here pretty much all my life. I know it like the back of my hand. I know the people that live here and work here like the back of my hand. and i went to school here too so for undergrad i studied marketing and information technology whoa and then for my graduate um degree i went to school for public relations and corporate communications um so wow. in graduate school is where i learned a little bit more about project management specifically about logistics and that's where i kind of had a little taste of event planning but like i was telling you before in college i was very active like i was in ethiopian student association you know i was um president of that <laughs> i was in black student association i was um in all these different organizations where they would always say hey yodi can you plan this meeting or can you plan this event so i would be around campus passing out flyers for wow events. And then one day um these club promoters came to campus and they saw like hey what club are you promoting and I was like oh I'm promoting <laughs> they like Ethiopian Student Association club and they're like no 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 what night club and I'm like oh I don't know what you're talking about I'm not promoting a night club and they're like oh you should you know you can make money you can do this and that and all that kind of stuff and I was like okay I can do that like pretty much pay me because i'm bringing people to the club and i would bring a lot of my friends and other people and then i would get money for it and then i started my own business with my business partner and the company was called talk of dc we did yeah i heard about it we did a lot of like abisha events like the abisha thanksgiving abisha christmas abisha new years Um, and then we would just do all different types of celebrity events at big clubs around DC. Um and then we actually went to Miami once. We did a whole like DMV takes Miami. It was really fun. It was great because we were young and you know when you're young you want to party and it was lots of money at a young age. Um but I knew I couldn't do it forever. So I I had a corporate job the entire time once I finished college and I remember my husband said, "Hey, why don't you think of wedding planning?" And I was always scared of brides. I was scared of like the quote-unquote bridezilla, the drama, all that. And then um I remember one of my friends reached out to me to plan her wedding and it was a really big wedding for like 550 people. And I said, "Okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have like a real company. I'm going to make a website. I'm going to make logo, all this kind Whoa. of stuff. Whoa. And it worked out really well. Wow. And like I told you, 
at the wedding. Marcus Samuelson was at the wedding and his beautiful wife, Maya, was at the wedding. And you don't know when is your time is your time. Yeah, and... you don't know. And um, they both were like, oh, this was a beautiful wedding. You did a great job. And it kind of just reinforced like, yeah, oh, really I should nice. be doing this. Maybe I have some type of talent to plan, you know, these big Abishaw weddings. And that's kind of how Favored by Yudi yeah, that's why I wanted you to tell them because when we had our conversation, a lot of people wants to come. As I told you, for instance, I started decorating like a couple of uh, months ago because I love decorating weddings and I love doing that. And then, okay, I said, oh, let me turn it to business. And then I started it. It was booming like in a way, but I was like a ship going without, like, okay, I was a plane going without a pilot. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to navigate what I need to do to the extent that I had to stop it because half of the events I did was sentimental. I didn't even let the people pay. Mm -hmm. Family, friend. Oh, I was like, how much is your price? No plan. So I literally <laughs> have the craft. I literally had the ability to execute, that's when I found out about you, actually. Yeah. That's when I was like, okay, let me study some people. Like, let me see people in the DMV area. How do they do it? Yeah. Then I said, uh, uh, events planner or wedding decorator in the DMV area, and your name pops out, and I started watching your... I was like, I wish I have this girl contact. Like, even if she allows me to come to her event and learn one, two things, and yeah. do I have to go to school for it? Yeah. A lot of people think that they have to go to school. So somebody was like, I think in America, uh, if you want to do anything, you have to go to school for it, mm -hmm. get certified or yeah. else. And then I came to talk to you. You were even giving me a whole lot of different advice, yeah. advice which I want actually people that are here because I feel like we have a shop people. We're very talented. We just don't have the information yeah. the knowledge and we perish because we don't have the right information and we come to this country as a, a refuge and then we we settle for less yeah. because there are no platform when i started i told you when i started this platform i wanted to bring every man and woman that are talented mm -hmm. that we can learn one or two things to go and bring out that thing inside us i feel like every human being has something beautiful inside them Definitely. and I want you to also tell the people, like, when it comes to event planner, decorating and everything, you know, the things you shared with me, even if the video stops, guys, we're going to come, like, for 15 minutes. I, I hope you've yeah. given us that time. And then you guys can ask her for 10 minutes a question. So yeah. please, like, uh, Yodif, just share with us, do we need to go to school to be an event planner? Yeah. So is event planning also, is event planning something that, somebody can take as a carrier to make a living, a good living, because in the end of the day, we go to school and become a doctor because we want some digits to come to our bank account. Yeah. We go to school to have a better life. Yeah. And a lot of people don't see, you know, last time uh, Yeni was here and she was telling us like, hair is like, we know we thought, oh, oh just roll hair and do the thing, oh, but there is a whole lot of process that yeah. goes to it and and you can become actually what she became with the hair business yeah. but because she took certain structure yeah. and plan and steps to become so and with event yeah. planning there's a lot of options out there you know there are schools that you can go and you can get certified in event management like i was telling you i took a project management class that focused on you know events um oh okay you can go and take courses online you know i mentor people and i give them resources like hey you can go to this website you can take classes online and you can get certified um there are lots of like hospitality courses in college where a lot of people are like hey i'm going to college what classes should i take Hospitality is the core of event planning. You know, it's a service industry. 
Wow. You need to realize that's the core of it. Of course, there's other things on top of it with design. You know, you need to have a creative eye if you're going to get into more of the event designer role. Um, but when you're thinking about planning, that's all about logistics and hospitality. So that's why I feel like people should do the research and, you know, Google is your best friend. If you want to learn <laughs> anything, you can find it on Google and you can YouTube it. And if you say, you know, how to become event planner or how to become wedding planner, there's going to be a lot of steps and a lot of articles for you to look at and read and listen and watch so that you can like get the tools. And then I always say, try to get on hand, uh, hands on training. So my first job, you know, was in high school. I worked at Starbucks for all four years of high school. And I remember when I first started my job, like the first week, you don't do anything. You just follow the people that work there and you watch them, you watch and see what they do so yes. that you can learn. That's the same thing in any business, whether you're gonna be an intern, whether you're gonna volunteer, whether you're gonna job shadow. And so you're, you're gonna invite me to your events, right? Just for me to watch. If you want, yeah. When I, I am like, I am 24-7 available. Give me the time and the date. I will follow you and see what you do. I'm yes. just, and we I'm just making offer... you promise in public. Yes. People, yes. I'm just um, making her. <laughs> we offer um, two uh, internships every year. So whether it's fall and winter or it's summer or spring and summer, um, people can intern like right now we have two amazing interns one is at Marymount and she's getting you know credit and right now she's helping with a lot of like our uh, back end things because of course we don't have events but she just shadowed like we had our engagement shoot for a couple a couple thank of you to <laughs> Oh, she's like, please come. <laughs> this is a task of part of the team. And she was, oh, she was I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Got it. And, you know, just by being here and learning, we meet like once a week virtually. And I try to give them guidance on different ways that I learn things. But then also, I want them to use their brain too. Like, how would you approach this problem? You know, how would you solve this? If a client has a problem, what would you say? And then I walk them through like the correct way. But um, definitely, I feel like people should reach, if they're interested, reach out to me. I will say that sometimes. Do you have any platform? Do you have anything lined up like for people that wants to be an event planner or anything? Do yeah. you give training? Do you yeah. register people I and give offer, training? I just want yeah. I offer mentoring like one-on-one -on -one okay. mentoring. So people can reach out to me and, you know, I send them all the details and we have like a hourly rate of pretty much every session. And, you know, it's good because they get really good information, but it's good because there are some people, I get a lot of emails and DMs. Okay. And people are like, I want to help. I want to do this. I want to do that. But they're not really serious about it. So this way I can find out if you're really I'm serious. serious. <laughs> I, I promise you I'm very serious. Okay, good. Um, and yeah, I take a limited amount of mentors every year so that that way we can really focus on your skills and like. Oh, you can't them. hear me? They say they can't hear me. Oh, I can hear you. Everyone is hearing me? Uh, Habashana, we can't hear you. I'm the loudest person on earth. If it means if they can't hear me, there is a problem. That's weird. I can hear you perfectly, though. It's Does anybody talk. hear me? Yeah. Okay. So they, okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I would say um, they can visit our website, www.favoredbyyodi.com. Okay. You know, fill out the inquiry form. My I'm going to put it under this video. Okay. Uh, in my YouTube channel, also in uh, Instagram, so that you guys can go get her, oh, good, get her contact and, you know, for your wedding. Okay, Yodi, I also want to ask, outside one wedding. One last question, because I want to okay. answer another one before we have to go. Yeah. Um, the girl said, what is the qualities, what qualities should an event organizer, event organizer have? So, 
event, that's a great question. Um, event yeah. organizers, huh. there's a lot of skills you should have. Um, one, you should be patient because sometimes things don't happen the way you plan. You have to be able to adapt. Um, you have to be creative. You know, thinking creative is a great skill set. You know, mm -hmm. um, everyone on my team, they know like there's stuff that changes and we have to think creatively of like, oh wait, how can we do this? Or how can we do that um, in a very short amount of time? Um, you also have to be personable because people are trusting you with their special event, whether it's a wedding, whether it's a birthday, whether it's a corporate event, and they want to be able to get along with you and trust you with their special event. Um, so those are the main, I think, qualities someone should have. Um, and then I also think that some, some sense of education is huge. And when I say education is you want to continue to learn about new things. You want to learn about you know, new skills within the event industry that you can better your craft. You want to learn about um, different cultures that you know, your, cult your clients might be coming from. Um, and these are mm -hmm. things that I think not only with event organiz organizing, but just in general, in any in general. industry, you always want to better yourself. You want to take classes. Like th right now during COVID, I've been taking a lot of webinars. So I'm trying to improve my skills. I'm trying to get more organized. I'm trying to learn like how to do more design things, stuff like that so that I can give my clients better quality and better services. So that's anybody that have question, you can start uh, having your question. If you have any question for Yodi, basically Yodi has given us the whole platform uh, to understand. She really explains to us that you really explain to us everything we need to know about event planning. <laughs> what is There's inside so it? And but one people. thing, what is the funniest thing that ever happened? You can remember, make us laugh a little bit. Like, oh my god, there's so much stuff. I've but that one that you cannot ever forget in your life. Oh my gosh! So there was one time. This was early in my career that, and my husband, he remembers this too, because um, I had had an intern, and this is why.